Hey guys, today's video is all about the cons of having a corgi. Not to say that they are not awesome, awesome dogs. There is just a lot of things that people don't know about. Corgi's popularity has grown like crazy because of social media and we get messages every day asking where I got Willow, um, how to find a good breeder, people telling me that they're getting a corgi soon and that they want a corgi. So just wanted to do a little informational video Basically, five or six reasons why you might not want to get a corgi. And at the end of the video, if you pass the test and you're okay with all of those things, then a corgi is the perfect dog for you. So the first reason that you may not want to get a corgi is you may have noticed this, but they are very high energy dogs. They were bred to be working dog and they were actually meant to herd cattle. So they were very energetic, always keeping cattle in their places, running around, and they love to have a job. They need mental stimulation, they need physical exercise, all the time so they're not the type of dog that you can just leave at home all day while you're at work and the type of dog that just sleeps on the couch all day they're not the couch potato dog they're the very active hyper dog as you can see Willow is has too much energy right now to even sit with me for this video she wants me to throw her ball so if you hear some feet scratching and uh, some barking that's Willow trying to get me to throw her ball if you're thinking about getting a corgi you should consider how much time you spend at home how much time you spend at work how much time you spend traveling are you super Super active do you do things where you would be able to bring your dog with you a lot I personally bring Willow everywhere that I can with me whether it's like to brunch or hiking or to walk around downtown Willow is always with me she travels with me so just make sure you have the time to put into exercising your dog. Some corgis I know are walked twice a day for 30 minutes. So not all corgis are super high energy, but just know if you do get a high energy dog and they're not being mentally stimulated and they're not exercising enough, they're going to take that energy out in your house in some way or another, whether it be digging holes in your backyard, um, eating the baseboards of your wall, Willow did that, chasing your cats. They need a lot of exercise and mental stimulation. So just keep that in mind. One thing I love to do with Willow is play different treat puzzles with her because she is super food motivated as well. I get her these treat puzzles and they have several different levels and you just hide little treats in it and they have to use their brain to get the puzzle open and get the treats out in different ways. Um, we also love to use snuffle mats, so they're like little mats with pieces cut all into it and you hit hide treats in there. It allows them to use their nose to sniff out treats, it allows them to problem solve, it's a puzzle for their brain, so it also tires them out because it's mentally stimulating. Doing things like socializing them, taking them to doggy daycare, or taking them to the dog park, uh, or even just training and working on making sure they're walking next to you or teaching them new tricks is also a really great way to get a lot of their energy out because like I said earlier, they are working dogs. They like to have a job, they like working hard, and they like being rewarded for working hard. Now the second reason why you might not want to get a corgi is because they are not that type of breed that is just aiming to please you. I know a lot of the most popular dog breeds like Golden Retrievers, Labradors, things like that, they just want to make their owner happy. They're very agreeable. A lot of the time being rewarded with praise is all they need and they just want to be the best dog they possibly can be. Corgis are not like this. Corgis want to do what they want to do when they want to do it. They're very stubborn, but they're also very smart. So they may hear you giving them a command that they know, but they may just choose to ignore it because they don't want to do it. Willow is so good at recall. And if I have like a really high value treat like chicken or something, with me, she comes running to me like a bullet if I call her and say, come. But if I don't, she'll literally run close enough to me, see that I'm lying about having a treat, and then turn and run the other way. There have been so many times where I've chased her down the street and she thinks it's a game when I'm chasing her. Corgis really like the chasing. Um, I think it comes with their hurting nature, but I have run down the street barefoot and burnt my bread in the oven because Willow got outside and she just runs from me and usually it's somebody else on the street that has to stop her for me. 
Luckily, Willow is very friendly, so if there is someone else on the street, she likes to go up to them and say hi to them. So in these situations, she has been caught, but she is super stubborn and literally only listens to me and does tricks when I have a treat in my hand. Being that corgis are so smart, but so stubborn, just know that if you do get a corgi, they are going to require a lot of discipline and a lot of training. A lot of corgis do really well if they are crate trained, they know commands like place or go to your bed. They have a very structured daily routine. My trainer has told me not to let Willow on the couch or sleep on my bed. And that has been probably the hardest training method that I've had to go through. Um, she still sleeps with me, but this structure and routine and discipline is really good for corgis. So just know that if you get a corgi, they're gonna take time and energy, more energy than just going to puppy training. They really love working on tricks and they love doing dog sports and agility and hiking and socialization. So just know that if you do get a corgi, it's gonna require that extra work. But it is so fun being a part of a corgi community. I guarantee any state or country that you're in is going to have some kind of corgi club where you can take your dog, get advice, and do all kinds of corgi meetups. So don't get too overwhelmed. If a corgi is your dream dog, just know that it's gonna be a lot of work and that they might not listen to you all the time. <laughs> all right, Willow's back. So the third reason you might not want to get a corgi is because they are prone to a lot of health issues unfortunately. They have such short legs and such long bodies making them just you know genetically predispositioned to different health issues like orthopedic issues. Um, they commonly have torn CCLs which is the dog equivalent to an ACL so you know torn ligaments in their arms and legs and when things like that happen they tend to result in a lot, a lot of medical vet bills. I know a lot of corgis that have had to not just get surgery, but they have to spend money on years and years of rehab, physical therapy, just getting their dogs back into shape because of injuries that have occurred. Corgis are born with a genetic mutation, but this has been bred into them. The mutation is for them to have such short legs, it's basically dwarfism, and this helped them as a breed to herd cattle because they are so low to the ground, they are able to nip their ankles and get put them in place. And you will notice corgis doing this a lot of the time with each other, with other dogs, other cats, and Willow used to nip at my ankles all the time when she was a puppy. And sometimes I just feel her do a little nudge on the back of my leg. And I know that that's her hurting. But because of this genetic mutation, these dogs are also prone to health issues if they are not bred correctly. And because of the popularity of corgis, more and more and more people are just breeding corgis without doing things like genetic testing, health testing, and it just doesn't end well for so many people. There are too many corgis that I know from Instagram that have things like hip dysplasia, which basically is when the hip socket doesn't fully cover the ball portion of the upper thigh bone. This leads to the hip bone on one or either side becoming partially or fully detached, and symptoms can begin in dogs as early as four months old. It just continues to get worse and worse over time and typically leads to your corgi needing physical therapy and even possibly surgery, which can be so, so expensive. And it's just so devastating to see a dog in that much pain, especially a younger corgi. And this could all be prevented by making sure that we get our corgis from reputable breeders. A great place to find reputable breeders for corgis is the Pembroke Welsh Corgi Club of America. I will link the website down below, but it's basically a full directory of breeders that are qualified and are breeding their dogs the correct way. You can search by state and it lists all the breeders in each state that you're looking through. So just be very careful when you're researching and looking for a corgi, looking for a breeder. Make sure you can go to the breeder and meet their corgis and see that their corgis are healthy and happy. Make sure that the breeder is either showing their dogs or making sure their dogs are living active lifestyles and in sports and things like that. And 
make sure you can even speak to some of the people that have bought from that breeder and confirm that their puppies are indeed healthy. One more health condition that corgis tend to have is just osteoarthritis and different orthopedic issues just because they have such short legs and such long backs. It is a lot of weight for these dogs to carry around. I have stairs for Willow up to the couch and up to my bed and I try to prevent her from jumping um, onto things and off of things as much as possible. So when you have a corgi, you just wanna make sure that they are staying at a good weight because as soon as they're overweight, it's gonna put way more pressure on their joints and legs and backs and it definitely will lead to medical issues. Um, another thing to be aware of is exercising them too much. If they are too active, if they're jumping on and off things too much, this can also be bad for their joints, for their backs, and for their hips. So you gotta find a nice fine balance. Corgis are typically, they weigh between 20 and 25 pounds. If you have a larger corgi, then they may get up to 30, 32 pounds but a safe weight is around 25 pounds and you wanna make sure that they have a waist and that you can feel their ribs. So I know, you know, thick corgis are super, super cute, but it's unhealthy and you wanna make sure that they are maintaining a good weight at all times. Another reason you may want to avoid, get my baby. Another reason you may want to avoid the corgi breed is if you don't like really loud vocal dogs. Corgis, they, as I mentioned a million times already, they were bred to be herding animals and so they are very loud. Corgis' barks are super loud. They make a lot of different noises, which can be fun and can also be annoying. Willow isn't particularly loud. I mean, her bark is extremely high-pitched and loud, but she doesn't bark too often. She barks when she wants something. Um, when she gets really excited. And I remember when she was a puppy, the first time I put her in the car with me, I brought her to work with me and it was like a 30 minute drive. And she literally sat in the front seat in a little car seat, staring at me and barking at me the entire drive, like so loud. It was so horrible. So just keep in mind, corgis are not the quiet dog. They are loud, they bark a lot. They make a lot of different sounds. Willow makes like little, um, little grunting noises at me, and she whines a lot. So just be aware, corgis are not the quiet breed. If you ever go to a corgi meetup, it is like the loudest thing ever, especially when someone throws a ball and they all go after the ball, they're all barking. It is so loud. It's super fun, but just keep in mind, if you live in an apartment where you need to be have a very quiet animal um, and things like that, or if you have a newborn baby, Corgis might not be the dog for you, at least not at this point in time. All right, so the last thing that I can think of today is that I get this question all the, all the time, um, do corgis shed? And yes, they shed. They have so much hair, they have a double coat, and they are shedding all every day of the year. They do shed their winter coat, um, or at least that's what it feels like right now it's March and Willow is shedding a lot more than normal. So just know that if you have a Corgi, maybe don't have a black couch and black sheets and um, have a lint roller with you at all times because all of my black clothing is just covered in dog hair. Like, let me see if I can show you my leggings really quick. I don't know if you can see that, but hair everywhere. And yeah, granted, corgis are not, corgis don't shed as badly as like a husky, obviously, or a German Shepherd. Um, their hair is not as long. And I have had like brushing competitions with my cousin who, who has a German Shepherd and Willow. And I mean, her dog will shed like a mountain of hair when she brushes her and Willow just like sheds a little ball but there's always hair coming off everywhere. So if you don't like that, corgis may not be the right dog for you. I personally thought that I hated dog shedding on me and stuff, but as soon as I brought Willow home, I didn't care anymore. So, you know, love overturns all of the hair that's all over your clothes, but 
just something to consider. It does um, come as a restriction when traveling with her. A lot of the Airbnbs and rental spaces that I want to stay in don't allow dogs that shed. So just something to keep in mind. There are just pockets of dog hair in my car. I have a little hammock that tries to keep the hair off of my seats, but there's just hair everywhere all the time. I am vacuuming, not every day, but you know, every other day and finding hairballs floating around the floor all the time. So corgis do shed. They are not horrible, horrible shedders, but they do have a lot of hair because of that undercoat that they have. And a lot of times that hair is coming out. So I really hope some of these facts were helpful for you if you're thinking about getting a corgi. Corgis are truly awesome dogs. And if you love taking the time to work with your dog, train your dog, take your dog to public places all the time, Corgis are literally perfect. They're so social, they learn very quickly, but they do need a little bit of extra work. And if you're able to adopt a Corgi, that is so amazing. There are plenty of places where you can adopt Corgis and I will link some places down below. All in all, I think Corgis are the perfect dog. I will have a Corgi for the rest of my life. I love that Willow is super athletic and social and she's just like my little emotional support animal always cuddling with me and being so sweet all the time. So if I missed anything, um, let me know, please, all of the Corgi owners out there. Please let me know if this video was helpful. I really hope it was. I just know that how popular Corgis are becoming, so many people are buying Corgis now without actually doing the research, and I don't want to see the breed get tarnished because of that. So just be aware of all the things that come with Corgis, good and bad, and good luck with your corgi journey. Huh, baby? Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.